Hey everybody, welcome back. We are back in Nevada and more specifically up in the northeast corner of the state in Elko County this week with not one, not two, but rather a whole host of new properties in this region. Now, I want to say here at the outset of the video, typically when we do these, these are what we call property specific videos, meaning that we're going to go into a lot of detail about one specific parcel. Occasionally what we like to do is when we have parcels that are in a given subdivision, we will do a subdivision specific video because the land is so largely interchangeable, all the details apply equally. And so we do a video like that and we post it on all of those listing pages. This is the first time that we're doing a subdivision specific video that's actually going to cover a number of subdivisions, more specifically Twin River Ranchos, River Valley Ranchos, and Humboldt River Ranchos. And the reason that we're doing this is because all of these subdivisions were created at the same time by the same developer. They have the same qualities when it comes to roads and utilities and neighbors. They have the same zoning, the same restrictions, or rather I should say lack thereof, the same general taxes, and we're charging the same prices with the same affordable financing on them. So everything I'm going to discuss here will pertain 99% of the way to each of these lots. I will tell you guys that if you're interested in property in this region, of course, we always have the property specific notes on our listing pages, which will enumerate whatever differences, however minor they may be, about these respective properties. And additionally, at the bottom of each page, as always, guys, we have photos not only from the nearby town, but also from each individual parcel to help you better compare and contrast these as far as location, as far as neighbors, as far as utilities, as far as roads, so on and so forth. And I will add one last thing here, guys, which is that if any of these properties are so unique, so exceptional, that we need to go into greater detail in some way, we will have a second video posted down here at the bottom of the page, just right above the gallery, just to kind of discuss whatever I feel merits discussion about that particular parcel. With all that said, guys, let's start the video off by doing as we always do and pulling these properties up on the Google Maps. So as always, people, we like to point out that Elko County is located up here in the northeastern part of the state, occupying a massive chunk of land in Nevada. Uh, of course, if we zoom in on the map up here, you're going to see that Salt Lake City is roughly about 200 miles east of Elko County. Reno, not even on the map, but it's way over here, roughly about 300 miles west. All the named towns that you've heard of, such as Boise, such as Jackpot, such as Winnemucca, are all roughly a couple hour drive from this region and from where these subject properties are located. Fortunately, guys, the county of Elko is home to the town of Elko, located just right over here. And as always, guys, for the uninitiated, for those of you who haven't been, who don't know what the region is like, we have photos. This is what Elko looks like out here, guys. Population roughly 20,000 people, give or take. Of course, being located this close to a town like this, you're going to have easy access to government services, to healthcare services. The Northeastern Nevada Regional Hospital is, of course, one of the sort of top tier premier medical facilities within the state and particularly within this region of the country. So, of course, if anything goes pear shaped for you in your life, you will have easy access to medical care. Additionally, guys, we've also got the regional airport over here. I believe the major carrier out of this airport is Delta, so probably easy flights into Vegas, into San Francisco, into Reno probably also Seattle, something like that, Salt Lake. And of course, as we go through the photos, we can see what the airport looks like. We can also see that this area is home to schools, churches, parks, recreation, and the ubiquitous casinos, guys. It's Nevada, so if you throw a rock, you're going to hit a gambling institution. And of course, Elko has a number of them. Additionally, of course, guys, this one also has a Walmart. Elko is also home to a super Walmart as well as Home Depot. So, of course, if you do end up buying one of these properties, you're going to develop it. You're going to need building supplies. You're going to need a bulk amount of groceries, anything like that. Of course, it's just an easy trip down the highway into nearby Elko to purchase anything that you need. And of course, guys, we've got groceries, we've got pharmacies, and a rich Western heritage reflected all throughout Elko's thriving, we'll use the adjective thriving, downtown region. With all that said, guys, it bears mentioning that also in close proximity to the subject properties as well as Elko are a couple attractions that you wouldn't suspect up here. Most notably down here in the southern portion of the county, you've got not only Ruby Lake, but also the National Wildlife Refuge nearby. And additionally, very close to that, you've also got Franklin Lake and their wildlife management area. Additionally, people just a little bit south of Elko, you've got the South Fork Reservoir down here. And in the northern portion of the county, you've also got the Wild Horse Reservoir just up here. Of course, all of these will provide plenty of great opportunity for fishing and boating, general relaxation, maybe even some jet skiing, maybe even some water sports. All right, people. So the subject properties we're going to discuss today are all located just here north of Interstate 80, north of the town of Rindon. 
Of course, it should be noted, guys, this is labeled as a town on the map. Realistically, I think Rindon is more of a gas station and a convenience store. The real town, of course, is Elko, which I mentioned earlier, located roughly about 15 minutes southwest of the subject property. So, of course, anything you need as far as grocery supplies, big box stores, fast food restaurants, so on and so forth, it's just a quick drive down the highway here into Elko. Whatever the case, guys, if we zoom in on the map, you're going to see a couple things here. Now, first off, the three subdivisions that we're talking about, once again, Twin River Ranchos, River Valley Ranchos, Humboldt River Ranchos, all occupy this region north of the highway. One of these subs bleeds a little bit down here just south, and some of them go kind of over here just a little bit west of Rindon. But the point is that all this land that you see in this area are these subdivisions. Now, I'm not sure if this reads on Google Maps, but if you kind of zoom in or if you do this on your own, on your own computer, and kind of go to just map view, you can see that there's sort of checkerboard pattern of land here. So what this is, is you've got roughly about a 5,000 acre chunk of residential land, and it's surrounded by a 5,000 acre chunk of government land, another 5,000 acre chunk of government land, and another one over here. And it's built like a checkerboard pattern. So here's another 5,000 acres of residential, 5,000 residential, so on and so forth. You get the point. But I'm pointing this out because if you are in one of these places, even if there's a dense cluster of development, which you don't really see out here, but even if it came to be at one time, it would still provide you a good deal of privacy from your neighbors simply because you've got so much space separating you from the next sort of residential unit of land. Now, the next thing I want to point out here, of course, is if we go to satellite view and we kind of zoom in on this, what you're going to see is, as always, development occurs closest to the highway. So down here in the southern portion of these subdivisions, if you zoom in on the map, you're going to notice there's a lot of home sites that are in this region. Of course, with these home sites, and you know, this is a chicken and the egg situation, which came first, the home sites or the utilities? The home sites or the well-maintained roads, right? But the point is that down here in this region, you've got these home sites because you've also got the utilities, the utilities that extend throughout the region. And north North up to roughly about this road up here, which is 6th Street and or Jacinto, depending on what part of the subdivision you're in. Point being, guys, if you're looking for land that has better maintained roads, that has underground utilities, that has power at the lot line, more neighbors, a little more respectable, nice looking, looking neighborhood where zoning laws are kind of conformed to a little bit more, you're going to find those down here in this region. If you're looking for more privacy, fewer neighbors, if power isn't a concern to you because you've got solar panels, and you don't care. If you want to go someplace where you can build what we'll call a non-conforming residential structure, you would probably go in this area north of Jacinto, up here, up here, so on and so forth. Of course, the further north you get, the less scrutiny you're going to experience, probably from both government as well as from neighbors. Now, the properties that we're listing today, for the most part, are in the rural northern area. And as you go through any one of these photo galleries, you're going to see some well-maintained roads. And then, of course, the further north we get, a little bit harder to navigate. We recommend anybody who goes out here, whether you're looking at a property in a really well-developed region or a not well-developed region, that you take a larger truck or off-road capable vehicle because either way, you're going to encounter some roads like this. Of course, what you also see in these photos is some of the nearby development off here in the distance. You can see some of the residential home sites that are out here, some of which have power lines. Those are the ones still closer to what we're calling the developed area. A lot of these don't have it. That will always be evident in the photo galleries. Additionally, of course, underground utilities, not necessarily in this part of the sub, but closer to the highway, as I mentioned earlier. Of course, the other thing that you get here is just a sense of exactly how pretty this region is. I will say that our photographer was out here on a day where the sky was overcast and it was snowy. So maybe not the best photos in the world that we could have gotten of the region. But I think if you use your imagination a little bit, you can see exactly how sort of majestic northern Nevada can be. Of course, you can also tell that the land is largely flat. It's got a lot of vegetation on it. So if you do decide to build out here, you're going to have to do some landscaping. You're going to have to do some sort of clearing of shrub, we will call it, before you can actually start to build in the region. Now, as we go to, we've actually got some drone photos here. These, by the way, are the Ruby Mountains off here in the distance. Of course, you will have excellent views of these from really any property that you buy in Elko County. But that is even the case here within these respective subdivisions. Now, as we go to the drone photos here in the gallery, you get a sense of exactly what this region is like, the surroundings, the terrain, so on and so forth. And with this particular property, exactly how kind of undeveloped it is and how few neighbors exist within close proximity to it. With all that said, people, it's important to note that one of the primary benefits for owning land within this given region in really any one of these subdivisions is that all of these subs have no HOA, no covenants, no restrictions, no annual dues, and no time limits on building. 
This, of course, opens you up to a greater degree of independence as well as possibility in how you elect to develop the property. Now, of course, guys, it should be noted, as we are fond of pointing out, that while these subdivisions may not have subdivision-specific rules, they are all part of Elko County, which means they fall under the Elko County Zoning Ordinance. In these particular properties, all of them within these various subs are zoned R1 or single-family residential, which, according to the Zoning Ordinance, means they are designed, quote, to provide and preserve low-density residential living areas reserved predominantly for the development of single-family dwellings. Now, what exactly does that mean? Well, guys, if you come down here and click this link, it will bring up this PDF in a separate window. This, of course, is an excerpt from the Elko County Zoning Ordinance, specifically the R1 Single Family Residential District. Now, guys, if you were to read through this, you're going to get a pretty clear sense that Elko County encourages homes to be built out here, single family residences, one stories, two stories. Additionally, mobile homes with permanent foundations would be acceptable. Modular homes would be acceptable. Shipping container homes likely built up to state building code guidelines would probably also be acceptable. There is no enumeration here for minimum square footage, so if you're looking to build a tiny home, that's something you'd want to reach out to the county about and ask them if that sort of thing is acceptable, if you need additional permits, so on and so forth. But if you read through this, guys, you're going to get a pretty clear sense that these properties can't be used for camping or for indiscriminate RV living. This isn't the kind of property where you can just go set up your RV, live out there 9, 12 months of the year. Now, all that said, guys, I want to just direct your attention to some photos of home sites that are in this area. You are going to see home sites that look like this. This looks like a pretty nice, respectable home. Looks like there's some pretty nice, respectable respectable homes around it. Additionally, as you go through the photo gallery, you'll see ones that look like this, maybe a little less, maybe not as nice, but it looks to be some kind of formal structure. People may be living it. Maybe they've got a little additional junk in their yard, a little extra kind of broken down cars, one or two of them. But overall, it looks like some kind of dwelling that somebody might be living in. But as you go and you look at other home sites that are within the region, you're going to notice that these are what we will call sort of non-conforming residential structures, which is my way of saying whatever exactly is enumerated in the zoning ordinance, it suggests to me when I look at home sites in this area that not everybody is abiding by what is in the zoning ordinance. And typically when I see this, what it usually suggests to me is that as long as you have some kind of septic tank installed, as long as you're not disposing of waste in some kind of haphazard manner. They probably don't care too much about what you're doing or how you elect to develop the land or only half develop it or not develop it at all. When I see a region like this, I'm seeing, oh, this looks like a pretty respectable home site, but then right across the street looks to be some broken down trailers in the area. Point being, guys, that we just like to let you know what the letter of the zoning law says, and you can kind of figure out exactly how much leeway there is in that once you get out there and you start developing the property. As always, of course, guys, we recommend reaching out to planning and zoning, talking to them in advance about whatever plans you have, particularly if they're unconventional plans, the aforementioned tiny homes, shipping container homes, etc., as well as learning about time limits for, hey, I've got a mobile home, how long do I need to get a permanent foundation on that? We're looking at this picture now. Maybe this was placed one week before the photograph was taken, and maybe they've got six months to put down a permanent foundation. Who really knows? But the point is, guys, that as you look through the photo gallery at some of the home sites that are out here, you're going to notice that not all of them seem to conform to the letter of the zoning law. So I just like to point this out in these videos that what it says and what you can actually do in reality are probably two very different things, but we just like to make our buyers aware of that. All right, so let's get into the buying options here, guys. There's three ways you can purchase this property. Let's talk about the cash way. So you can come up here, you click the buy now button for the cash price. It's going to take you to this secure checkout. Of course, we do not anticipate that the average person can charge $7,500 on a credit card in one shot or that the average person would want to. So we ask for a non-refundable, people, let me say it again, non-refundable earnest money deposit of $500 just to kind of kick off the process. You give us the legal name for deed, tax address, and down here, agree to the terms of service. Click next, and on the very next page, you can enter credit or debit card information to complete the purchase. Now, guys, we do actually provide you with a little bit of an option here. When we get north of $10,000 on properties, we like to recommend to our buyers closing through a title company. When we are south of $10,000, we recommend just letting us write and record the deed for you as it'll be cheaper and easier. That said, this is the kind of price point where I could understand people being sensitive about that. Maybe you want title insurance. Maybe you want to close through a title company. So right here on this page, in this helpful dropdown, we ask the question here, how do you want to fund and close this purchase? Click the drop down and you'll be presented with two options, credit or debit card, seller, that's us, pays the closing costs, or title escrow, buyer, that's you, pays the closing costs. 
Or if you want to talk to us more before you decide, of course, you can click Need More Information Before I Decide. Whatever the case, those options are available. Point being, guys, you put down the 500 and then we will either close through a title company or we will send you a payment link to pay the remaining balance with credit or debit card, wire transfer, cashier's check, or whatever your little heart desires. Now, additionally, guys, the second way you can purchase this property is through a payment plan or terms option. And if you click this checkout right here, it'll take you to this secure page where we will ask for only the down payment and then we'll set up a recurring payment plan to be charged once a month. Now, of course, we don't do a lot of financing on the website, but when we have properties like this where a potential buyer is probably going to have to develop the land from scratch, we do like to give you the option to finance so it does make it a little more affordable and so you can own the land while you are simultaneously developing it, paying for both at once. Anyway, guys, much like the other form I showed you on this one, we require the same information, legal name for deed, tax address, and then once again, agree to the terms of service and then you can place that deposit. Now, let's pretend for two seconds that I went too fast through some of that and you would like to learn more about this process. Fortunately, guys, we got the payment options noted down here on the listing page. This enumerates the various processes I just discussed. Of course, you got the cash option, number one, the title escrow option, number two, with these helpful links right here to some different pages on our website. The first one's called How It Works, Buying From Us. This is what that page looks like, and it goes into more detail on the purchasing process. And additionally, we've got title escrow FAQ down here. If you do want to go that route, but you're not terribly familiar with the process, this page will answer any conceivable question you could have, including everything from benefits to cost to schedule to logistics. And additionally, guys, if you do want to take advantage of that third option and purchase this by putting down a deposit and paying the balance on the property slowly over time, you'll be glad to know that we discussed that process here and that we are offering 180 days same as cash. And for those of you saying, hey, Hemingway, I'm not going to put down any money till I know what I'm being asked to sign. Well, fortunately, people, we have a link, a very helpful link right here. You click that, and it'll take you to a generic version of our standard land contract for properties in this subdivision. And this will enumerate the various terms of the agreement, including monthly payments, late payments, who's responsible for new property taxes, so on and so forth. But the 180 days same as cash, as you can see, is reiterated right here. Whatever the case, you can read through this and get to familiarize yourself with all the financial elements of the contract and everything that you would be responsible for as the buyer. Of course, keep in mind, guys, we do not deed the property into your name until such time as the balance has been paid in full, which means that this contract is the document that between now and that time demonstrates your, quote, equitable interest in the land. With all that said, people glad to be offering more of these small residential parcels up here in Elko County, so close to the town of Elko itself. Additionally, I like the land in this region. I like the land in these subdivisions. It might not be for everybody, but of course there is a certain type of customer out there who does like being far from the prying eyes of neighbors, having that kind of privacy, as well as the ability to develop land from scratch and develop it really in whichever way they see fit. Additionally, guys, as the business grows, it's nice to be able to offer more affordable financing options for you guys so you can simultaneously purchase the property while you are developing it. In conclusion, people, thanks as always for watching, and we will see you in the next video.